Pam, I'm wondering, I saw uh, a little bit about the 24-hour rule. We've heard a little bit about it uh, a couple times this season. I'm wondering if you can take me behind the mindset of that and how it works uh, for various guys on the team. Been digging real deep in my mental game lately, ain't she? <laughs> it's a um, 24-hour rule is basically you give yourself 24 hours to either celebrate or soak and sob. And after that 24-hour rule, after the 24 hours is up, you let it go. That's been so helpful for me in my growth as a man and um, on the temple. I mean, in terms of cleansing, cleansing your mind from from a loss or from any sort of uh, negative negative thing that happens with the 24-hour rule, what what kinds of things do you do? Uh, is there a, you know, go to a workout, take a walk? Oh, it's family? a dark place. Dark, dark. I mean, man, it's, it's, it's dark. But, you know, times I've lost track of time. Times where, you know, I mean, it's, I just don't like losing. So, <clears throat> you know, you give, the, you, you set ramifications up for yourself so that, you know, you can learn from it, but at the same time, be productive. And um, that's the rule that I set for myself. You actually, I mean, last year you were better at it. Every year you've gotten better and better at it. What What was the moment that you said, I've got to get better at handling that? My kids. My kids. My kid, I owe a lot to my kids. Um, and um, surprisingly, it's Shakira, the oldest, because... I see a lot of how I act, they see it, and they think it's acceptable. So, you know, I, even though it's hard for me, you know, I realize that I, I, I have an obedience to, to, to be there for my children and, and teach them life lessons, and what other better way to teach them life lessons when you're actually going through certain situations that mean a lot to you and things don't go your way. So, when I go home, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to give her or any other ones any ammunition to be able to shoot back at me. So that's why. Does she say stuff to you in the kid? past about it? Uh, she, 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 it's a respect level there, but I know. I know. When I talk to other people, it's it's certain things that it's hinting towards. So, um, yeah. Was there a moment, one thing that you saw? You said your kids are a reflection of you. Was there one thing that one did that kind of opened your eyes? No, it's it's. it's <clears throat> Parenting is, 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 is a lesson in life every day, you know, and, and during the season especially, I don't get a lot of time to spend with my kids like I want to, being that I'm here a lot. But, um, you know, it's a lot of time that a lot of people sacrifice, not only as players, as coaches. You used to think about, you know, I think about a guy like Norv who's been in the, in the game for 30-plus years and, you know, obviously his son has – that's a perfect example. His son is, is doing everything his, his dad is, you know what I'm saying? And, and Scott is an unbelievable coach, and, and I look at it through that, through that same type of lens. And I'm not saying that, you know, my daughter is going to be a, a football player, an icebox. Uh, but it's still certain things that she's, she sees from afar. You know, social media is there. She's not on social media, but – you know, it's certain things from YouTube that she may see. Um, she has fanatic peers that uh, doesn't hate to, does, doesn't hesitate to tell her, you know, what her dad did or whatever. And um, that's just how life works. So, you know, I feel like, you know, a lot of a lot of things that that I'm good at teaching, I've, I've actually learned, you know, for myself the hard way. When you get on a streak like this, how careful do you have to be to not overanalyze everything and make it more difficult than it needs to be? Just go out and play. It's funny, you know, we had a talk earlier today and it was about perception and reality. Perception is, you know, we're, we're right in the muck of, of a lot of teams in the NFC that's hoping and praying for another team to do certain things and, um, you know, that has a, um, a chance to make the playoffs. <clears throat> but the reality is, Four out of those five losses came with a, under seven points. So, you know, 
my thing is we got to strain just a little bit more. No matter if it's the first play or the last play, hate for it to be the last play, but if it, if it takes it being the last play, we got to strain more than that next team. And, you know, when I go back and I look at my performances and I look and I say to myself, man, if that ball was just a little bit more out in front, man, if that ball was just, you know, <clears throat> here rather than there, man, if I would have just took a check down, man, if I would have just scrambled just a little bit more, man, if I would have just did that just a little bit better, you know, I think our season will be different. But we still have an opportunity to change that, and I'm not about to sit up here and dwell on things that I can't change. I'm just going to focus on things that I can. Cam, what is sort of the mood right now of the guys in the locker room after you know three losses? Is it, is it anger, anxiousness, frustration, eagerness to get back? On Shocked. What is yeah. Shocked. I, I I feel, you know, man, we've had so much of 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 you know, disbelief in, in, in the outcomes of games that you realize, like, golly, we lost to this team and we lost to that team. And we, we watch the film and, you know, it's happening. But, you know, we are we're, we're our own greatest critic. So, you know, when we analyze a lot of things, I know from an offensive perspective, you know, some things that, you know, with a lot of points, a lot of meat on the bone that we left, and, you know, we just have to wait to our next opportunity. We practice extremely hard, great practice today followed by we're going to need another practice like this today, tomorrow, as we get prepared, you know, for our division opponent. Yeah, has, it, has it been hard to watch the film of these losses, like knowing how close and, and a little? I think it's, it's, it's not hard to watch the film. It's hard to watch the plot of the film, if that makes sense. You know what's going to happen. Um, you know how it ends, you know. And I think watching it gives you, you know, better understanding and sometimes you know bless you sometimes you know you feel as if you know you feel better watching the film knowing that okay I'm better than that I, I, I know I can do certain things better but now it's upon us to you know start you know having that turnover happen quicker during the games. Cam, it sounds like you guys are working through the woulda coulda shoulda and you're starting to focus on good sportsmanship <coughs> And I think because the team has so much camaraderie, how has this helped you folks reflecting back? Well, you know, it's a lot of games we wish we'd have had back. Um, it's a lot of things that, you know, it's just, like I said earlier, it's just about growth. Um, you know, for, for me, I understand what my job and what my responsibility is to this team. I can say that, you know, years back. And I, 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 I just know, you know, it's a lot of people that's watching you know, through those lenses and even in that locker room. And, and, I, and I owe it to them, you know, and I got to make sure that I'm, I'm my best self, whether that's conditionally, physically, and, you know, mentally, you know, prepared to, uh, you know, take this team to the next level. Cam, yeah, I know you like to keep some of this stuff a little more on the private side, mm -hmm. but is, um, is Shakira, is she closer to a teenager now? And, and you're kind of learning about how to, raise a, a young lady who's becoming a teenager and you're also raising very small children and she's that's 11. a lot that's a lot of learning at the same time she's 11 oh my goodness i'm i'm, I'm. it's funny it's it's funny that we're having this conversation about kids cuz um question in the locker room was uh and and i hope um you know funds procedures going going according to the plan um, somebody asked me, did I cry when, I, when, when Chosen was born? I said, no, nah. but I cried when Sovereign was born, though. You know, when, when you have girls in your life, man, you know that they're going to make an impact in your life in ways that I, I never would have even imagined. And, and obviously, you know, I wasn't there for the birth of Shakira, but, you know, that's my, you know, godly and fatherly, you know, due diligence for me on earth. And, you know, she's 11. And everything about her just points that I have to be better. I, you know, from attitudes to what she likes nowadays, is it okay to date? And it's like, oh, my God, it just happened so fast. I mean, I didn't never get a chance to just even like, okay, well, I need to get prepared for this. It just happens now. And for her, she, she goes to school in Atlanta, and, you know, she tries to keep, um, you know, um, you know, certain things on the wrap because she's not 
in the in 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 into that type of stuff. It's just crazy. But it's one day she's into it, next day she's odd, next day she's embarrassed, and the next day she doesn't want to. So you know, as as a parent, you you got to know how to respect you know your kids and and their privacy, and you just have to know every kid's different, everyone's different. You know, you see it at three months, all the way up until. 11 years old and probably beyond that. Yeah. You got to do to to get his career on target. That I do not know. I got my plate full trying to get a win. Um, you know, super talented, you know, a person that can make and do everything any other quarterback can do. Um, so and you and every other player have a chance this week to shine a light with the with the my cause my cleats campaign. You kind of do that in various ways every game, just kind of wondering over the years what some of your more meaningful pregame cleats have been. You know, it's funny. Um, you know, I see guys like Odell. I see guys like A.B. I see numerous guys who have a strong cleat game. And it's funny when I, I remember I used to get fined for doing it, and I still would do it. And it's now, as you know, I'm not saying that I start. I put everybody on this, you know, you know, because it's it's. I look around the league and I see guys that's doing things that inspires me, you know. So it, it's it's a wonder where the league has gone now, and it's 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 still, you know, a fantasy just to see where it's gonna go, uh, because we didn't have my cause, my cleats, my rookie year, um, but you know, just to have something that means something to you. Outside of football, um, you know, means a lot. You know, obviously, I, I have my foundation. And I try to reach out to as many kids as possible, whether in the, you know, in the communities that I have the most impact on, and you know, that's that's what I what I'm paying homage to. You had fun with them too. I mean, various times, Auburn, yeah. Atlanta, Creed last week. Mm -hmm. Did you, where do you get the inspiration? Well. It's gotten to the point now where Under Armour just sends it, and I wear it. They know I'm not scared to wear anything. Um, if, it, if it fits good, I'm going to wear it. it, it but it, it also gives a different element to the game that is not mentioned a lot. You know, um, self-expression, fashion, uh, swagger, whatever. You know, for so long, football has been a mass sport. And, and people don't realize who people really are outside of or when they take the helmet off. Now, you got big personalities up under the hood. And we don't have the luxury like a soccer player or like a basketball player or, or people who doesn't wear things over that's, that's covering their face. So, you know, you got to make a splash while you can. And, and when I see other guys, influential guys around the league, you know, my hat goes off to them. Um, but for me, it's, that's what it's all about. It's about expressing yourself in ways that it doesn't take your mouth to even open. You know, you just know that certain things that you wear and certain things that you do from a celebration, you know, people are going to talk about it and they understand like, oh, okay, well, what is it that he was feeling or why did he do that? And it just sparks a different conversation. And when he was drafted, what was your original impression of, of Christian McCaffrey and what is your opinion and impression of him now? Maybe it's changed, maybe it hasn't changed um, as he's kind of continued. Yeah, it's changed. It's, it's changed a lot. <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't, you know, you, you, when you, when you pick a, a um, anybody, you know, I've had my fear of, of people that I've invested so much in and, you know, things just don't pan out early. Uh, you guys who our free agents that end up having a big splash and guys, you know, whatever you may have. But, you know, C-Mac has defied all odds, you know, and the thing that has always put me at comfort with C-Mac is he's, he's always been a workhorse. He's always been a playmaker. It's no, it's no denying that. You know, my thing is when you draft a person, whether it's a quarterback or whatever, has he, is he comfortable when the game is on the line? And, and that's how I grade guys. It, well, like if we get a receiver, is was he the number one receiver or was he a role player or whatever? Um, and C-Mac was everything and a bag of chips, you know, and you see it, you know, in, 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 in how he plays. And I look at last week's game and the, the one they strung off for 60, 70 or however long that was late in the game, any other average running back, you know, 
would have tapped his head and said, hey, listen, I need a, I need a blow. <laughs> you know, the play came in. I said, another run play? I looked at him. He said, I'm ready to go. explicit go. So <laughs> we called the play, and he gassed him again. And, um, you know, we gave it to him again on the third time, too. But, you know, it was, it was still – it's still a sight to see, and it's, and, it's, and it's encouraging and motivating to see a guy that you know – that can attack a defense in so many different ways, whether handing the ball off, whether blocking, whether, you know, throwing the ball downfield. You know, I've never been around nothing. And I've had a fair share of great running backs here from D'Angelo to Stu and, you know, even even Toll. You know, those guys, you know, are all great for what they are. And, and, and C-Mac still possesses certain things that n neither one of them did. With his role and his kind of his stars rising even more so than it did when he was eighth overall pick, has he changed at all personality-wise? No. Mm -mm. No. That's – just don't – just don't call him small, no homo. Like, like, just – like, he hates being labeled, like, a small back. You know, he's, he's a person that, you know, plays bigger than he is, and his impact to the game helps us so much, and, and, and I can't just – you know, give it to you, you know, in details right now. But, you know, he's a person that, that, that that'll be around for a long time. When's the last time Jameis reached out to you? Who's that? Jameis, because you always should talk early on. When's the it's last time? hard to reach out to a person that you're about to play, you know. But, you know, we've talked in, in past. We, um, you know, I got a lot of respect for him. And knowing that, you know, the things that he's been through is only going to make him a better player. Um, and I have no doubt in my mind he'll get together. You mentioned going back and evaluating. Sir. Did he reach out while he was benched? No, sir. You mentioned going back and evaluating your game and how the plot of the tape can be sort of hard to watch sometimes. But overall, these past three weeks compared to the last win in Tampa, how would you compare and evaluate the way you've played overall? Uh, honestly, I feel like I'm playing the best football of my career. Straight up. And. Uh, I just, I just feel in, in, in control. There's, there's, there's no, there's no question marks. There's no, I'm, 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 I'm a, my assuredness of every single play. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. I'm not saying in pass, you know, it's coming from a person who has success in this league, and it's just, I, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to sound you know, like that, but I know my worth. I know who I am, you know what I'm saying? And I really could care less what another person thinks, wholeheartedly. Like, Would you say that that's different because of the guys you have around you or because of Norv? Or no, that's me. That's all personal. Okay. That's all personal. And that comes with preparation. I feel like when somebody's at their best and facing me and I'm at my best, we, we win, you know what I'm saying? And of course, you know these last couple of the couple of games we haven't had you know the winnings to back it. But you know I give myself comfort knowing that you know I still got to be better. There's room for me to improve, but I feel like I'm playing the best football of my career right now. I mean, we know the wins and losses are always most important to you, but like you're saying, and all the work you did in the off season mm -hmm. to get to this point to put yourself in a position to play this way, has this been gratifying for you? This stretch of having a passer rating over 106 games in a row and just being in control, as you said all year. No, th that's not gratifying to me. Gratifying is 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 winning number one, two and three. Four comes. Did you put yourself in the best situation to be your best self? You know what I'm saying from health wise to everything else. And and RV, Scotty, Too Hotty, Norv, man, those guys have been been great to work with and just put a plan together to make sure that on Sunday I'm peaking. And, um, you know, it's just up to me to, 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 to be a professional and take care of my body and make sure that I'm ready to roll by then. Just one more Christian question, if you don't mind, Cam. Um, you know, you hear stories from back in the day when the Panthers <coughs> went, went drafted Thomas Davis because they needed a guy who could defend Mike Vick or, or be put them in a position to defend Mike Vick. You hear stories about uh, you know, different personnel, Shaq Thompson coming here to defend different types of versatile mm -hmm. players across the division. 
Is Christian, and, and of course with yourself, players, teams have definitely had to draft a counter uh, or try to counter the things that you do. Right. Is Christian the same type of player? Do you see teams starting to adjust what they do, um, whether it's in the draft or the different personnel they play? The whole running back position has evolved. No doubt about it. When you see guys like Christian McCaffrey, when you see guys like um, Todd Gurley, Alvin Kamara, um, Le'Veon Bell, you know, gone are the days, Ezekiel Elliott, and uh, pardon if I'm missing some, Kareem Hunt. And those guys are all down backs. And, and I, I remember even back in the day, I used to, <laughs> I never understood in Madden when I used to play Madden. It used to be like third. Down. It, it never said third down back. It had like an abbreviation. And I never like, what is it? You know, never got it or understood until I, you know, really got into the NFL or really started. You know, you know, college. We would have certain things and packages. But these these running backs and more that are that I forgot to mention. Man, it ain't no package. You just got to get geared up to prepare for them for sixty plays a game. And they can take a screen pass and score. They can take a trap and score. They can block in, in the pass game. They're everything, and, and, and they're changing the game. So, you know, my hat goes off to all those guys knowing that, you know, they're a part of the evolving of the game, just like dual threat quarterbacks. When you talk about guys like Mike Vick and Randall Cunningham, Steve Young, uh, John Elway to a degree, you know, guys who can attack a defense so many different ways, when we look back years years down the line and we see certain players, you know, we, we're going to be able to say that during this decade of football is when that position changed. Sam, when you say you, you feel like you're playing the best football of your career, did you ever feel that way, like either at Auburn or in 2015, or, or is this a new feeling for yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, I did. And, you know, I don't know what I'm saying, but – I was rewarded with wins, you know what I'm saying, and, and just the affirmation of knowing, like, boom, we went in. Now it's 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 tougher that we're not winning, but at the same time, it's my job as a quarterback to know. Like the selfish me would have been like, oh, I'm good, I'm, you know, we ain't we ain't losing because of me. But that you know that's not that's not where I am right now in my career. It's my job is to bring up the guys who aren't playing so well. And, and, and bring them up. And guys who are playing better than me, I need to get on their level, you know what I'm saying? Because it's a lot of guys that's busting their tails each and every day, not just on game days that will never have a press conference, will never really talk. And, and, and they're the unsung heroes. And, you know, for me and, 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 and what my worth is to this team, it goes beyond just making plays on Sundays. And that's what I've learned the most. And, and, and I, as I keep learning, understanding things that, you know, it all comes back to square root number one, help from my, you know, precious kids. And uh, hopefully, you know, they can bring me some luck and uh, on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you.